Hey everyone, uh, Don Rasmussen here at Quartermaster. We're doing our part two with Dr. Jim McDaniel. Uh, Dr. Jim, of course, as from our first session, was a client and now heads up our research and development department and actually does the interviews for the chiropractors. Um, and so I just wanted to take an opportunity because a question comes up all the time, Dr. Jim, and that is, okay, I've been through this study, I got a nice credit, I got a nice check back, but how do I maximize it in the future? Because, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And so when they come through this first time in the process, you certainly are uh, digging deep, and that's allowed our credits to increase for our clients. But how do they make sure in the future that they are optimizing it? What would you say? Yeah, so, you know, one, continued to be curious and to research and always look for better ways, whether you... Um, whether you implement a service or not, if you're investigating and researching whether this might improve your care, um, jot that down. You know, hey, we investigated bringing in cold laser. I looked at, you know, say you spent five or six hours investigating different cold lasers. Just jot that down somewhere so it'll jog your memory because one of the major things I see is docs tend to underestimate the time they spent researching in their office. So that's one of the best things you can do is, is you know, document that time that you do spend investigating and learning. Gotcha. So a journal wouldn't be a bad idea, you know, to kind of journal throughout the year or, you know, just take kind of take a week and say, okay, you know, this, this week here, I've been doing this here, or my staff, you know, we talked about this. And and big thing, of course, is, uh, as we were talking about off, off air here, is that, the reality is it comes down to that, that re-exam, that re-evaluation, and how important that is to determine if there's been an improvement upon the, the, uh, the patient outcome. Is that correct? Absolutely, yeah. And in the IRS, it, they don't dictate what you have to do to document it, mm -hmm. but you do have to be documenting your results. Sure, uh, sure. So that's part of being a good doc. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, if you're, if you're researching ways to improve your documentation, or to re re improve your outcomes, mm -hmm. that in itself is an R&D project. So looking for, for different, uh, you know, we have such great technology yeah. available to us now. Um, everything from uh, documenting outcome assessments to, uh, you know, some of the higher tech, uh, like, like uh, JTEC and MyoVision and other such products. Yeah. Um, investigating those and bringing those in helps you on a number of levels. So. Sure. So l let me address one other thing before we go, uh, Dr. Jim, and I hear this because we work with a lot of different um, vendors out there who have different modalities, lasers, decompression, you know, the whole nine yards. Is there a value to them to introduce a new technology into their practice if they're uh, more of a practice that, that brings that type in versus just a hands-on? Is there a value of bringing it on? I know there's a from a tax perspective, we get a deduction. You can do a 179 deduction, but when it comes to this process, improving upon protocol process, what, what's your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely, because there's time and energy to research and develop bringing in a new product. Mm -hmm. um, is it going to give you better outcomes, better measurables? All of that is that will increase your R&D by bringing in this product that will, because ultimately you're trying to improve your patient care, which sure. is really the gist of what this credit is about. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, when you're going to these these conferences of Parker or uh, FCA National, and you see all these different vendors out there that are, um, you know, trying to get you, trying to encourage you to get a laser decompression or, you know, myovision, whatever it may be, there's a value of doing that. Not to say that, you know, it's go, you're going to get a dollar for dollar, but because you've made, taken steps to improve upon that patient um, protocol in the, the process of their outcomes, then there certainly is a value of, of adding that to it. Absolutely. And the good news is the clock starts on R&D when you conceptualize and ask the question, hmm, is integrating my practice a good idea? Yeah. That's when the clock starts. So all of the investigation that you do to maybe look at bringing in, maybe it's a PT or a nurse practitioner, mm -hmm. or, or is it a laser or even low tech is boy, I wonder if I'm going to get better results if I learn how to do kinesio tape. Oh, sure. Uh, they're all equal in the time, 
because it's the application of time. It's not coupled to the cost or the expense of the product or the service. Sure. But for those who are contemplating, it's interesting, Doc, that how many times that we have had this conversation and because we were able to uh, do the R&D study and they found the funds out there through R&D, they were able to use that to purchase or pay off a piece of equipment that they purchased. So that, that's kind of an interesting uh, viewpoint that, you know, your past R&D could very well fund your future R&D. <laughs> Absolutely. I never mean, thought about that. So. Absolutely. Any, anything else you want to share with everybody as far as how to optimize it going forward in the future? We talked about journaling. We talked about maybe new modalities, uh, new treatment uh, processes, learning some new stuff, and, and whether that's continued age education or something to improve the patient outcome. Anything else that they can do to when they come to do their interview? So every year, of course, you get to go back and do a brand new study with Dr. Jim and our team. So what can they do to enhance that? Well, another thing they could do is they could involve their staff more in, in the care of patients, in the evaluation of patients. Mm -hmm. Make sure if you're getting feedback from your staff about protocols and processes in your practice to note that because that time spent, if they're giving valuable information, that is also part of the R&D process. Yeah. So. And that's a very good point that, that I want to make sure we mention. I appreciate that, is a lot of times we see where if the doc is doing everything, then it's just your W-2 that we get to, to look at. But if you're in, adding your associates and your CAs in there to assist in this process, now we get to draw their wages in. Now that's going to help enhance your credit as well. And you're, you're really leveraging your time in your, uh, for the R&D perspective. Yeah, and you might even delegate to a, a, a really sharp staff member to go out and do some research on your behalf, look right. through some journals. Um, say, for instance, if you're looking for better treatment options for plantar fasciitis, uh, you know, have, have Sally go through and see what's out there available and what can she bring to the table that would help you research and develop your treatment for plantar fasciitis. So That's very good, very good. Anything, any closing thoughts, Doc? No, I would just, just encourage you to, um, you know, stay curious as a practitioner. Um, you're going to provide better patient care, and as a consequence, you're going to um, improve your R&D credit, too. Yeah, absolutely. It's a win-win. Yeah, it is a win-win. Again, thank you very much for joining us for part two of uh, maximizing and optimizing your R&D uh, tax credit. And again, we thank you for being a client of Quartermaster. We look forward to serving you for many, many years in the future. Again, have a blessed day. We look forward to talking to you again. Mm -hmm.